Toyota Land Cruiser 80 Series Pan Hard Pan Hard Bar Adjusters. Today we're doing a modification, and these are the factory stock rear bar and the front pan hard bar. <coughs> we are going to be adding the Slee off row adjusters. This is so that you can adjust your pan hard bar shorter, or in this case, we're most likely going to extend it. <coughs> uh, you have to do this when you install a lift that's over three inches or more. <coughs> if you were to buy a new adjustable bar, some of them run about $300 each. And uh, this is a much cheaper alternative. <coughs> these guys <coughs> were actually, um, they ran, these piece right here are $150 each without shipping. Uh, but it's crazy because a couple years ago, my buddy, he said he did it and he bought these for $75. But that was all before, you know, uh, C19. But what's crazy is that when I first started looking at these about two weeks ago, they were listed for $105 on Slee off roll and then like two days later they bumped the price up to 150 so it is what it is so i paid about 300 350 for it ship we're gonna i'm gonna show you guys how to install them uh based off of their instruction they do have instruction so we're gonna start with the rear one this is the rear and when you um these are my spare ones so these are the ones that i took off the lexus lx450 <laughs> the bushings are still good so i'm gonna modify these and then i'm just gonna go ahead and take the one that's off of my red truck now and keep those stock factory and keep those for spares. I know that the bushings on these right here are much better than the one on my red truck right now. <coughs> so I wanna go with these guys. And once I take the one that's off my truck, I'll probably put new bushings on those guys and I'll keep those for trail spare. But what you wanna do is when you take them off, <coughs> uh, you wanna mark which side is the frame. So on the rear axle, this is the frame. <coughs> and then this goes to the axle. And then this one here is pretty self-explanatory. This goes on the axle, <coughs> this goes on the frame. So we're going to start with the rear one and according to the instruction, <coughs> well, let me show you the product here. <coughs> so this is the rear, this is the, uh, no, the rear one is this one. <coughs> so the rear pan hard is like this <coughs> and we're going to basically cut it and this will slide into the bar or the bar will slide into here and then you will weld it. And then this right here will slide into the, uh, on this side. On the front pan hard, it's the opposite way. Uh, the bar slides in here. And then the bar slides in here, but I'll show you guys all that once we get to it. So according to the slee instruction on the axle side, they want you to cut five inches off. Now they say that you, they on the, on the instruction, it says measure from the end of the eye bushing. I don't know if they mean like right here. This, this is the eye right here. I don't know if they meant that right there or they meant like way over here where the bushing is. But for me, I'm just going to start right here <laughs> because if I run short, it's okay because there's plenty of adjustment on this rod so we're gonna go ahead and make our first cut we're gonna cut five inches right there and then after that you want to cut another four and a three quarter four inches and three quarters off from here so chop this that'll be trash and then after that you can put these into place and weld them so i'm gonna go ahead and cut these up and then after that we're gonna go ahead and use the grinder and grind off this paint so that it's weldable and i'm not gonna actually do the welding on this i do have my cheap harbor freight welder but i don't trust that because these are suspension components and you know you really want to make sure these things are fully welded on so i'm gonna cut these off and i'm gonna take it to somebody that has a professional welder or knows more about welding and i'm gonna let them do the welding for me but for the most part, I'm going to do all the cuts and prep just to save the labor and time. So let me go ahead and start with this right here. Five inches and then after that, four and three quarters. I bought this little chop saw off of a Facebook market, 40 bucks. And then went ahead and bought a $6 blade to cut the metal. Five inches. This one kind of turned out crooked. I got to clean this one up a little bit more too. And then we have four and three quarter. This one will be trash. And this is a hollow pipe. So it's very tight in there actually. So this one, um, <coughs> one of them has to go in inside of here and you can see it's really, really tight. So I'm gonna have to grind that down a little bit. And then the other end is supposed to go in here, which is also a really, really tight fit. So hopefully it goes in smooth. Once they go in, then um, we'll separate the adjuster and then have it weld it and have it weld it like that. So that's what it's supposed to look like afterwards. It's gonna go in about almost an inch. You guys can see right there. And these are the Rosetta welds. You can weld these in as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and grind, um, use my grinder now. And we're gonna grind about that much paint off and then clean, the, clean all the uh, 
the pan hard. I got both of the ends cleaned up and nice. So this side here goes in really nice. The long piece uh, fits in perfectly, but the other piece is super tight. So this right here goes in tight. And then this piece here, I'm gonna have to grind off a little bit more because the diameter is just a little bit too thick um, for it to fit over here. I'm not sure why they made it like that. It's super, like you really had to get it in there. I wonder if I can get my press and maybe even press it in, but I'm gonna try to grind some more off of the adjuster here. You guys know I bought this press about a year ago and I rarely ever use it, but whenever I do use this press, I'm really thankful for it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set the adjuster and then just press it in. Hopefully it levels itself out once I get it going. Voila, there you have it guys. The press worked really good. So if you guys can't get it in there, grind it a little bit off of the adjuster and then after that, um, try to get it pressed in there, but the press went in really good. So this one is in place right now. We'll have them line it up and you wanna make sure that this is parallel to the other end and then after that they can weld it in and then we'll make the adjustment afterwards now it's time to cut the front one so for the front one like i said on the rear i measured it from the eyelet here but on this front one here i decided to go from this end here because i don't really know where end they're referring to so maybe if sleeve can update their photos and show like a measurement of like here or here or here that'd be really helpful but the thing is that it's better for me to be short because I can use the adjuster because I think the adjuster does plenty of adjustment in case I'm too short. So we're gonna go from here instead. So five inch. So you wanna do five inch and then after that, cut another five inch and trash and then this will go in here. Now this rod on the front pan heart is a solid rod. So take your time cutting it. It's not hollow like the rear one. So this is a bit more heavy, much more heavy duty because um, these things are meant to be built tough because if they get hit by a rock or something they have, they cannot bend and stuff so five inch five inch crap uh junk and we'll go from there here is the front <coughs> pan hard so make sure when you weld this um uh, this male thread <coughs> goes on the short end so don't get it mixed up this way because if you do it this way and if you ever need to adjust your pan hard you can't unbolt the frame you have to bolt it, unbolt it from the axle <coughs> so make sure you it like that this front pan hard <coughs> look at that it's completely full solid steel took about almost five minutes just to make one cut on this brand new blade here this blade is already chopped up already so <coughs> definitely use a new blade when you're doing this and then this is the rest of the pan hard nice clean cut so i'm gonna go ahead and get my grinder clean some of the paint off about inch and a half of paint and then take it to the welder and have them welded up. And this right here, you can keep it for souvenir. It has a nice weight right here. So that's pretty much it right there. Five inch, five inch waist, and then the rest of the pan hard. All the pan hards are cut to size, <coughs> clean up, prepped, and what if ready for weld. <coughs> this is the, what they should look like once you get them in. <coughs> Make sure the front is parallel with that eyelet. Here's the real one. We got the pan hard all welded up. Brandon did a great job. If you guys don't know, Brandon was the gentleman um, that helped me when my pole runner rolled two years ago. He was the one that helped pick it up, towed it back. And he's also done a few things for me. He's uh, done the welded diff for me. So he's the fabricator. He does this for a living. So I just uh, stopped by his place and have him welded up for 50 bucks. And he did a great job. <coughs> Make sure it's all level and weld it up it's still really hot right now so i'm gonna let it cool down it's already getting late tonight so i'm gonna let it cool down for the next 15 20 minutes and then i'm just gonna wire brush it and then um, put on some spray paint um spray paint it real quick and then tomorrow i'll go ahead and install these 
Uh, I'm not in a rush to install them right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, do some measurements. Before you guys even start this job, you guys are watching this, before you guys start this job, uh, I forgot to mention earlier, but make sure you measure the original pan hard. So before you cut your pan hard, measure the total length. And I measured mine already, so I'll go ahead and post it up in the video so you guys can reference it. But measure the total length of your pan hard and go, um, when you're doing your adjustments, go off of that. So for me, um, I'm thinking I'm going to go about half inch longer than what the original was. And then I'll check my, um, and then once it's installed, I'll check the, I'll check the vehicle and make my adjustments from there. Um, I read online where some people were doing adjustments where they did like a quarter inch longer and it wasn't enough. So I'm going to go with half inch and then we'll see how it is. If I need to go longer, then I'll go another half inch, but I'm going to do like half inch increments until I get it like fine tuned. But that's pretty much it right here. It's all nice and pretty. Um, like I said, go ahead and clean it up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and slap on about three, four coats of spray paint. And then when we install this, you also want to go ahead and put some anti-seize in there. So I'll put some anti-seize so that it doesn't seize up in the future. But everything's all nice. And I'm also going to go ahead and wire brush that sticker there so it's all removed. But Brendan did a great job welding this together. And I'm super, super impressed with the product, um, the sleeve off-road product here. Definitely looks good. Highly recommend it. It's a much more um, least expensive alternative versus having to buy the full adjustable pan hard bar, which runs about 300 bucks a piece if you're to go that route. So these little DIY are really good if you guys know how to do a little bit of fabrication or if you guys just wanted to give it to somebody that can cut it and weld it for you. It's definitely much more... Um, least cost effective way so let me go ahead and get this clean up and i'll show you these once they're installed i got the rear pan hard install got the front one installed last night and then woke up super early today and got the rear one installed so you guys can see right there uh, everything's been torqued down nice and pretty and i just got done fine tuning it so let me show you guys what i did so i had my little straight bar i put my little straight bar right here and then i pretty much just measure from the frame and uh we came to about 15 uh 15 inch and 3 8 on this end and then we also got about 15 inch um, we got about 15 inch and 3 eighths on this end too. We're probably 1 8 inch in, um, in a free play. Or I guess one. we're like about 1 8th, an eighth inch of difference. Which is within uh, specs. So the rear is good. And then now I'm going to go back to the front and do my front pan hard. I'm going to do some adjustment on the front pan hard. And then also I got to do an alignment on the front. But that's pretty much it for this video. Um, this is the Slee DIY adjuster. Pretty easy to do. Um, for the front one, when you adjust the front one to make the truck, uh, if to make the hose line back up on the front, all you have to do is put your key on the on position, and then when you turn your steering wheel, that will move the body, and that will help align your hole together. So when you're doing the front, make sure you put your axle one. Um, bolt on first because that's a blind hole and then to line that up to the uh, frame you can turn your steering wheel and that will make the truck shift and then that can line it up and then on this one you want to bolt the frame one first because that's a blind hole as well and then once you lift it up um, I was able to I was able to shift the body around just by putting this behind the frame and then leveraging it, pushing it towards the tires, and that was that was enough leverage to um, shift the body sideways to get the whole line up. So it wasn't hard at all. Um, if you have a second person, you can just have them push it, push the vehicle side to side. But for the most part, everything went on pretty pretty easy. Um, I also went ahead when I took out all the bolts. Um, I took the time to wire brush it, so make sure all the threads are clean. And then went ahead and put some anti seize to make it easier for the future. So once you do that, make sure you torque it down. I think I, I think the spec is 127, 127 foot pounds. I did like 130 foot pounds on my new Craftsman torque bar. But that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time.